everyone it's the time of the day when we tell you about everything that's buzzing in the startup space i'm priya shade and a very warm welcome to all of you to the daily dispatch on today's show i'm going to be talking about the top 3 companies that have been in news today and these include byju's policy bazaar as well as instagram well headline number 1 in yet another deal in the edtech space byju's has acquired epic for 500 million dollars This will help Byju's expand its footprint in the US markets as well as give it access to more than 2 million teachers and 50 million users who are part of Epic's global user base. Well, the IPO space seems to be buzzing and that is headline number 2 after Zomato and Paytm insurance aggregator Policy Bazaar is planning to raise as much as 6500 crore rupees through a public issue of shares. Now reports suggest that Policy Bazaar is eyeing a valuation of about 3 0.5 billion dollars via the issue now the policy was our ipo is expected to be a mix of fresh shares and an offer for sale through which existing investors can exit well the final headline of the day you may soon be able to collab on instagram the social media platform has been testing the ability of people to collaborate on feed posts as well as reels and pilots are being conducted in small groups in both india as well as in uk this will give users tools to co-author posts as well as short videos more easily Well moving on to our second segment I have with me a very insightful panel I have some veterans from the Ayurveda space and that's the topic of discussion today which is the business of Ayurveda and why the market has been booming over the last couple of years in fact covid-19 seems to have accelerated the adoption of ayurvedic products across the country and uh, i have with me three leading companies of course mr ramesh wangar from kerala ayurved thank you very much for joining us today mr jatin gujrati from vedic and param bhargava from the ayurveda company thank you very much gentlemen for joining us today um, i want to begin with you mr wangar uh, over the last couple of years uh, you have actually literally seen the business grow but the last couple of months have been special for the ayurvedic space and that's because a lot of adoption has happened in terms of more people uh, buying more ayurvedic products uh, for across the board so if you could give us a sense in terms of what the transition has been for uh, like for you so very simple i see ayurveda as a global heritage based in india and it's part of what we've got including yoga there is a global movement which is inexorable it's going to happen whether we like it or not and we need to be unlike in yoga at the front of it so that's the broad vision so really with ayurveda i believe it's not a product it's a total way of life and there are three principal elements that we're focused on supported by research products education and services so the entirety of the ayurvedic experience is to be able to achieve wellness and wellness is d- determined as immunity from disease okay and that is a crucial element that we're looking at as a core so if you think about it ayurveda in recent times whether it's the big multinationals or unilever it's a shampoo or is a turmeric cream which i think doesn't do justice to the core of our sanskriti and the value capability so in terms of this there are two major opportunities and that's global one is the united states and the third is digital all right so while we are an old company we're about 75 years old my personal involvement in this was initially as an investor but in the last 2 3 years i've become quite passionate because i'm way ahead of all of you in terms of age i'm in the last part of my let's say i wouldn't say even career i'm into mentoring a team of young innovation in young innovators in a sense liberating the animal spirit to go after two specific areas digital the us because us is a pathway into the rest of the the world and we are using the us as a startup and going in for raw innovation digitally enabled and we are seeing a lot of success and what is this based on we have about 180 products in the us all produced to prop 65 
which is the California standard of quality. To give you an idea, California standards of quality are about 10 times as more stringent than that of the US. So it's a completely almost, we're almost the only ones who are able to deliver this kind of quality for Ayurveda and that is specially tailored for the US, but it will grow global. The second is we have good research. We even have a number of US patents that we're holding on supported in terms of the therapeutic capability. And the third aspect is we have an active service business so, and education. Now services are the total pancha karma and in terms of that, and finally education. And what do I mean by education? We've got an army of about 3,000 people in the US, practitioners who have been trained in Ayurveda formally and recognized and certified by California and Washington state governments. So these 3,000 have basically done anywhere between 725 hours and 2,500 hours of formal education. So these are our feet on the street. So our model is very simple. I want to convert people into an ethos of Ayurveda. That entire ecosystem is not an alternative lifestyle, but it is the mainstream and emergency care is allopathy. Right. Interesting, uh, inter interesting insight out there. I want to come to you, Mr. Jatin, uh, to talk to you about how Vedics has grown over the last couple of months. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of transactions happening in the online space as well, with a lot of people shopping online uh, in the middle of this pandemic. So what's been the kind of adoption which categories have grown? Give us a sense in terms of how business has been for Vedics at large. Actually, last couple of months have been really good uh, for us. You know, business increased by almost 50% uh, month on month between April and May. Uh, but that has been a broader trend, I guess, over the last uh, two, two and a half, three years where more and more customers, see, acceptance has never been an issue as, uh, you know, Ramesh said very, very well. Uh, people, they're used to using Ayurvedic remedies at home. It was always about approachability and affordability. And with more and more brands coming into this, uh, uh, you know, into this space, I think those two issues are now resolved, especially with approachability, because now products are available on digital platform, which are far more easier to, uh, you know, transact on, and affordability as well, because now brands are such as ours, ours are pricing uh, products at a more affordable price points. So, so, so absolutely, I agree with everything that Ramesh said, and I think uh, we all internally inherently believe that Ayurveda is a lifestyle that has to be lived through. And it's not only about the products, uh, but sort of to introduce customers to, into the ecosystem and see how, uh, and then sort of make inroads from there. Uh, I think digital has been a great boon for the brand of Ayurveda from being able to spread Ayurvedic practices, from being able to spread content on education and from being able to uh, you know, sort of sell uh, Ayurvedic products. Right. I want to come to you, Param Bhargava, to talk to you about the Ayurveda company. Uh, uh, the company has raised some funds of late uh, and also you've been in expansion mode. So what's the kind of thought process out there? What's been the kind of adoption that you've seen on ground? So uh, the journey for us has been, you know, no less than fantastic. So last three months, primarily Ayurveda company raised their first seed round. And from there, we are uh, heading towards a larger raise very soon, which will be more of an institutional round. So uh, for us, I'll give you a little background. So we started with one brand and then we thought that to really, you know, spread the awareness. I really sync with what Ramesh has just mentioned, you know. Uh, Ayurveda is a movement. It's not only the products that are going out. It's like more of a movement and more of a way if you really want to understand the data and the numbers. The way Chinese traditional medicine is more towards a trillion dollar economy right now. Whereas it, Ayurveda has just been, you know, it has just started. It is like itching for disruption. So the entire move, entire journey is towards creating that mass movement that from being an alternative lifestyle to become the mainstream lifestyle, to make the life, the, the, the Indianness of this Ayurveda to go global and to, to spread that in the real sense, in the real sense, it is important that people start believing both in the internal sense as, as well as in the external sense. So the Ayurveda company primarily has seen more than 150 to 200 percent growth month on month basis in within the first three months. We've primarily launched with the beauty in the personal care space and more towards in the mass premium segment. And uh, also we've launched some Ayurvedic makeup segment, which is like in the natural makeup side of it, which has been very 
uh, you know, there are very few people who have been bringing out products into the makeup space from Ayurveda. So there we have seen larger adoption because people have not been there. And obviously the beauty side has been like the skin care, the skin care, the hair care. Those products have been, you know, uh, there where people wanted to try. But Ayurveda, the lack of knowledge of Ayurveda, lack of knowledge of ingredients, the concern-led approach, the content-led uh, selling has really throttled the way the brand has been shaping for us. So entire portfolio of ours, we have like in last three to four months, we have brought out close to 70, 80 unique SKUs spread across the entire journey. And also we have launched the US markets via Amazon. So we have seen really huge adoption in terms of how people perceive the Ayurveda in the US and the way they are adopting. But similar ways and similar trends are now uh, you know, visible in the millennial space of India, the people who are really active on the digital front, such as uh, the YouTube, the Instagram, the tech savvy world is adopting Ayurveda. That's why it is, you know, uh, helping the people who want to spread Ayurveda to a large, I being very young as compared to Ramesh and uh, really kudos to Jatin for creating a beautiful subscription-led model from Vedics that what they have been able to do. So for us, for me, primarily the journey started with the Indian name that is Khadi Essentials. From there, we migrated and created a much larger entity to spread Ayurveda as a wholesome internal to external mode and also working with the audience on the uh, doshas, that is the Vata, Pitta, Kapha doshas and the consultation around with our league of doctors, which are there on call, on uh, chat, who can consult people for the Ayurvedic problems and then spread awareness and knowledge and then finally lead to more of sales. So over the next six to nine months, we see that Ayurveda economy will really multiply. The bigger people like the Patanjali's of the world have been, uh, you know, doubling up the revenue at that level. And the digital economy is like uh, right now at a $5 billion overall on the Ayurveda level. So yeah, this yeah. will grow at least 20-21% on an overall level, year on year basis for next four to five years. So the, the Ayurveda economy will be very large and more and more brands coming up in the space will really throttle the adoption of Ayurveda. Right, you know, I'm going to come to you, Mr. Vangal, uh, to speak to you about the one pillar that you spoke about, which is digital, uh, which you said is an important pillar for growth, uh, not only for uh, Kerala Ayurveda, but also for the entire economy. Uh, specifically with regards to digital, what's the kind of adoption and growth that you've seen at Kerala Ayurveda in terms, if you could break it up in terms of which products or which categories are doing well uh, in the online space and where is the traction really coming from? Sure. In simple terms, let's go from where I left it off. First, we have traditionally in India in the past been targeted against doctors selling products which are therapeutic for complete healing towards doctors. In the recent past, in the two to three years, we've actually developed a whole line of products which are much more over the counter and also We've developed an exciting range of, for example, U.S. Department of Agricultural Organic and natural products with a skin investment. That means we're investing in skin care as a reflection of inner health. So what we've done is we've got categories which range from therapeutic, OTC, and the skin care element. The skin care element is seen as always being attractive because people are looking for the ancient as fast as technology grows, there's a part of us which yearns towards wanting to go back to the way it was in grandmother's time. That's one. On the other side, we do believe it's important to have uh, fundamental human contact because what uh, uh, Param talked about is absolutely correct. When you say that, you need to be in touch with the patient. So we've got an hybrid First of all, our adoption rates on the what is happening in the particularly in the United States and in India on the digital per se is very strong. We I think the company was awarded an innovative store of the year by Amazon. We've just recently done a global partnership with eBay, which will take us into 130 countries. Now, what's the thought behind it? What are we trying to do? So we're saying we yes, we'll sell products for sure, 
but at the same time, you want to evolve a hybrid system. What's that hybrid system? The hybrid system is one where, let's say, a doctor sees a patient, even live, when possible, but the next 12 months, instead of them rushing to him to go and see him and typically meet the doctor twice a year whenever they have a problem, they meet them on an ongoing business. So it moves from sickness to wellness. And that's what's opening up the totality of the market. So the hybrid consultation. So we've got a, a digital app, which for example, allows, it's, a, it's an ordering tool. It's a consultation tool. And it allows us to dispatch on a fairly unique model. And I think I've seen uh, one of these gentlemen have a nice model where they look for the skin. And we are deeply ingrained. Because if you look at it, we treat live prior to COVID about 100,000 patients a year. We've got about 30 live centers. We've got probably one of the finest Ayurvedic healing resorts in the world in Bangalore. And we are actually got a few hospitals. So we are into serious Ayurveda therapeutic and curative care, and we are moving towards the other end. What is probably unique in what we're trying to do is extremely high stickiness. 50% of the people who come inside come back and they keep buying. And that is exemplified by our resort in Bangalore. 65% of our customers has been coming prior to COVID every year for 17 days on average. 17 days to stay in a resort for a comprehensive healing. So my suggestion would be to your readership, Ayurveda is an exciting category without doubt. And it will be well beyond my lifetime. What I would recommend, we look at a creating this as a property. Let me ask you about yoga. Today, yoga started as an exercise in the US. You had variations like hot yoga, naked yoga, which is frankly nonsense. If you go back to its core, that is a spirit which will make us a global inspiration. If you look at it in terms of Hindu, Indian philosophy, and you look at it in terms of the entirety of what we're trying to do in terms of spreading the core of the yoga, I hope these gentlemen continue on the pathway of sticking with the core and expressing its Indianness and not change too much. Because I'll tell you, in Kerala, the adoption by the Malapuram area, which is the Muslim part, is the highest of Ayurveda. So there's nothing to do with religion. It's agnostic, like yoga. Right. You know, I want to bring in uh, both uh, Mr. Jatin and Mr. Bhargav uh, together here on this question. Um, I want to understand, like both of you have mentioned that you have you know, users coming to your platforms and you have consultations, uh, subscription-based models uh, that you're working with. So at this point in time, in terms of overall sales, are, are most of the sales on your own platforms? Are you exploring marketplaces even in India to expand the kind of reach of products to customers? Because how do you get the products to the audiences out there? So, yeah, so see, from the very beginning for Vedics, we have been about customized uh, Ayurveda because Ayurveda inherently is customized. As Bharapar mentioned, that uh, Ayurveda believes that we are all born with certain set of uh, doshas, vata, pitta, kapha, in certain balance, which goes out of whack. So what we did at Vedics is actually is a tech-enabled platform where you come in and answer a bunch of questions, which helps us understand where your current state of vikruti rather lies, and then give you a set of then give you a regimen that can help you. Uh, get it back into balance. So ever since we launched until date, 95% of our sales come from our own website, which is vedics.com, right? And only we, recently we started uh, getting listed on um, Amazon. And that was also sort of challenging because it's a self-serve model where customers has to really understand uh, certain, or rather select certain classifications. They'll bucket them into certain categories and we map it to the products. And the reason we have to do that is also is because the reach of the platform is so huge that helps us uh, get the customer uh, introduced to the brand. And then they can continue the journey on the platform itself, which is probably more much more holistic. Right? And we are building more elements to it. For example, courses, uh, educational courses, uh, more resources around yoga and what is Ayurveda, probably doctor consultation in the future. So, so yeah, so to answer your question, it has all been through our website, vedics.com, and it has all been subscription-driven. Almost 
nine percent of our customers who come in take a three to six month subscription, and about sixty five percent of them renewed at least uh, two to three times. So it's very uh, so yeah. So we've been able to do that uh, primarily because we have been able to educate the customer through the questionnaire on why this particular regimen works for them or should work for them, leveraging the principles of Ayurveda. Uh, for us, it is slightly different. So we are more of a very young age D two C brand. So we are equally equally distributed from our own website, the Ayurveda Co. dot com, as well as our larger channel partners, Amazon, Flipkart, Nike, Mintra. So wherever people are there are looking for products, we are available. So ours is more uh, the entire portfolio is highly researched in terms like we have been there in this business since two thousand and seventeen. So in the entire portfolio and the ethos of the Ayurveda company is it is India's first science backed Ayurveda. Like there are a lot of blends which are like seventy percent uh, Ayurveda, Ayurvedic ingredients, herbs, essential oils, and primarily blended with certain uh, in demand and very concern related uh, scientific plant derived ingredients. So. For us, we are uh, entirely positioned at an average selling price of four hundred rupees to six hundred rupees per product. Typically, spread over the entire portfolio, which Ayurveda can really cater to, and the products are entirely available on the largest marketplaces as well as our own website. So, our own website has also started generating really good traction, good traffic because. Uh, we are new age digital brand, so we know how do we really connect with the audience? How do we really work along with the right set of you know people who can really uh, connect with the audience? That are that are the power of the influencer marketers, power of the digital consumers. How do they? Who do they listen to? People who really you know follow our yoga. So how do we really bring people? Who have already spread yoga, and through them we spread Ayurveda. So blending all of the yoga practitioners, the meditation practitioners, to drive traffic to our own website. In the second leg of of the Ayurveda company, where we are expanding, the consultation aspect will be embedded in the uh, digital app, which which is about to be launched in this quarter, where people will uh, have the access of all aspects of content, be it the Watch aspect of the content, be it the practicing of the content, and then along with that go towards the consultation aspect. That but the product should be very OTC oriented. So for typical concerns, the uh, because Ayurveda has uh, you know ingredients and the uh, you know herbs which are there for all typical concerns. For example, a go to kula is really good for say anti aging wrinkles. So how do they? How do we bring these? Ingredients out in the market in their OTC form, so that because it, India is a very vast country, so digital yes, it's very important to understand. But end of the day, you know, uh, getting into the tier three, tier four towns, and to be very uh, focused in terms of larger adoption that uh, you know, uh, 130, 140 crore Indians adopting Ayurveda, you really have to also ensure that. Products are typically for retail, so our orientation is from digital first, and then going to retail. From there, for us, it's like doing customization is slightly difficult. So our orientation is to bring OTC products, make it accessible, make it available at a large scale, and then from there enter the retail side when people are already aware about Ayurveda and the Ayurveda company. Uh, moreover, and there from there heading towards the retail side of it. Right, you know, I want to come to closing comments uh, from all the panelists, and I want a quick comment in terms of what the future uh, of each of your businesses looks like, considering that there are already aggressive plans in terms of uh, how to tap the market and the kind of products that you're bringing to the market. So I want to begin with you, Mr. Bangal, in terms of what the future of the OTC business looks like for Kerala Ayurved. Uh, anything that there will be key focus areas for you, and in terms of uh, larger revenues. um larger uh, you know new products that you'll be launching into the market if you could give us some sense on that please sure uh look we've grown 30 to 40 times in the last couple of years and i'm talking primarily through digital and we've got now adoption of a education platform we've got literally 13 terabytes of videos and we've got about 6000 hours of approved education in the us why am i harping on the us because it gets adopted globally 
So our intention globally is to push adoption down the line on the core Ayurveda. Because if you are able to make this a mass movement, then it works. So in a nutshell, we'll bring all of this to India too. But why we're going the other way around is because we have an older system in India, which takes time to change. However, if you think about, visualize for a minute, if we are able to spread the word about Ayurveda, then it actually opens up more opportunities. I think some of the models that these guys have talked about is fantastic, great stuff, lovely entrepreneurship. My question, in Ayurveda, how big is big? You know, one plus one can be three, but it also can be 11. So the question is, in order to take it to the next level, we've got to get to the core of building a relationship with the heart and the mind and the body. Like an apple, you have apple with a bigger market share than, let's say, it's not the biggest sold phone, but it's a $2 trillion company, market cap. Why? Because of the fact they created that intrinsic relationship. So what I'm trying to do is to leverage the inherent brick and mortar, people touch strengths that we have and build it into what you're talking about, OTC or skincare or whatever. Because to my mind, I'm sure Ayurveda in the skincare and in the beauty is going to explode. But I really think for us, it's a much bigger opportunity to go after in some form of unified fashion, to be able to have a responsibility to, to get this category into what I think is the largest opportunity in the world. Right. So we are a fairly young brand built on uh, one category, but for future, we are looking at so basically a three-pronged approach. One is category expansion. And I believe, uh, we all believe we have a substantial Ayurvedic uh, doctor R&D team. And we all believe that Ayurveda lends itself beautifully to other categories, especially body care, baby care, neutral cosmetics, uh, and other categories of personal care. So we want to launch more categories and deepen our offerings within existing categories. We want to establish more platform relationships because uh, for a lot of Indian customers, the first experience of digital purchase is on these platforms. Therefore, we want to be present there and then slowly pull them into our own ecosystem. And uh, third is a global expansion. I think uh, Ramesh has harped on how big the US market is and we all agree to that. Param is also focused on building a global sort of business and we want to be in the US and Middle East uh, markets to start with and then from there grow to other countries. So uh, our future plans as of now, because we have just launched the first set of our catalog. So out of that, so we are the first ones to really bring the uh, Nani, Dadi, Ke, Nuske in the OTC side. So our hair care range, which we had launched, comes with blends of methi seeds, direct methi seeds put into, you know, hair mask kind of product. So for us, it's like building our initial uh, first set of catalog to a very large extent. So the the growth which we are seeing and the focus which we have internally is to become like a hundred crore D2C Ayurvedic brand in next 23 to 24 months, primarily by the end of uh, 20, uh, 31st March 2023, primarily. So that first target is there. And for that, we have been building the entire uh, beauty and the natural makeup cosmetics uh, segment in the first leg of growth and from there yes because we are so firm believers of Ayurveda and I practice and my wife also because my wife is my co-founder we are ardent believers the journey was very personal for us because she was suffering from urticaria from there we started using trifla churn in the raw form and from there we actually built our catalog so we have as of now two larger ranges one is the Eladi Trifla and hemp seed based uh, body care range, which has face polishers, body polishers, sunscreen based with Eladi Trifla and hemp seed, and a body oil. So, that range, along with our hair care, Methi Bringra Jamla, with a touch of science that it comes with uh, bio keratin, which is the blend of uh, natural keratin to you know, control the hair fall. So, these two ranges have been doing fantastically well for us, along with the tints. The entire focus is to really uh, get, get out there, spread Ayurveda, become the first brand to reach 100 crore within the Ayurvedic space in 20-24 months. And from there expand into the larger other categories, specifically the baby category and the health and wellness category. Health and wellness, we have already started doing, 
but we are just testing out the audience base for us which kind of audience will work because health and wellness primarily is to mass market per se because a lot of brands have been there who are there in the sub price segments of 200 and the formulation which we want to bring certainly cost slightly higher so from for that category we will build our own brand we will build our build our own community and to that community we will start doing our health and wellness products with that all right gentlemen thank you very much for joining us on this very insightful panel i'm sure the audience out there has got more than just what they wanted on the ayurvedic space and hopefully increase adoption of the whole ayurveda as a category thank you very much for joining us on the daily dispatch and thank you very much for your time thank you thanks Priya. for thanks for having pleasure us. well time now to wrap up this edition of the daily dispatch i'll catch you tomorrow at 5 pm goodbye and see you tomorrow mm-hmm.